Hi, I'm SBS from Avalites. I'm here at Plaza 2022 with LD Paul Smith. Hi. He's going to take us through uh, the two key new features in Titan version 16. So essentially one of my key requests to Avo recently was that I'd like a tracking view that uh, gives us a chance to get through QStacks, see where maybe we've misprogrammed something, something, you know, we're putting two lots of information into a queue where we don't only need to put one, where we can work out where things might go wrong, tracking, and very quickly troubleshoot something in a queue list. So we've got a quick queue list of a set of queues very quickly put together and labeled, just working with our capture machine here. So we've got a quick green down queue, a fan out queue. We turn all the spots red with an overlap. A very quick zoom in and move. Out to a fan out with an overlap. And then we add uh, some Roby LED beam 150s. So if we run back to that first queue, if we look at our tracking list over here, if I grab the fixtures that we're using, all of the spots, for example, so I've got my fixture selection, which then brings everything up. Uh, our filter on the tracking view here gives us uh, all of the spots that we're looking at. And then we run through this list, we'll very quickly see that I've recorded fan out uh, as a position for these fixtures twice. Uh, obviously, in the grand scheme of things, in this Q-stack, that doesn't really matter. But maybe later on, you know, when we're, when we're 20, 30 Q-stacks down the line and we need to revisit something for the sake of, uh, you know, updating some queues, seeing what's going on, or something, you know, we revisit a show a year later. Having all of that extraneous information is utterly unnecessary. It makes the show file heavier than it needs to be as well. Um, so we can really quickly get rid of that information purely by selecting the queue line. And then over on this screen here, we can delete any redundant values. So we'll see down here, we've got fan out uh, as our initial go-to point in the previous queue. And we've got fan out in white here, which tells us that it's a, it's a redundant piece of information. So if I hit delete redundant, that disappears and it now becomes a fully tracked piece of data. So that helps you when you come to update the queue list later. Completely, it means the, tra the tracking behavior is gonna be exactly as I expect it to be. So if I, if I hit that queue without having this window open, yeah. if I then decided that I wanted Q2 to be a fan in instead of a fan out, yeah. when I next run that queue list, I'm still gonna run into that fan out on Q3, because yeah. the tracking's not gonna update because it's got that piece of information there twice. So now I've cleaned the queue list up, I know that if I go back to this in a week and go, actually, I prefer that to be a different position, yeah. that information is gonna track through until the next time I actually wanted that info to change. And if you update with the tracking in both directions, then yeah. it's gonna go to exactly where you expect it. Exactly that, yeah. It's probably worth mentioning, isn't it, that it'll show you the uh, the, the palette legend and the value Absolutely. That, that's yeah. in the palette. So that you and the, you know, together. the power of being able to filter things. So, for example, you know, we've got the Robin, he says, selecting the wrong fixture. We've got the Robin 150s that obviously don't come into the queue stack anywhere until that last queue. Yeah. And again, I can very quickly, purely by basing it on fixture selection, get all that information to the front. By then adding bank selection, you know, I may want to look at intensity so that's where I get my intensity information yeah. I may want to specifically look at position so I get all of my position information bunched together so yeah and I like having it there because you're not digging around in exactly, menus exactly. to get to the you know, information I, that you're looking for that and you know if with with a relatively small show of, of you know 40 50 moving lights it, it's not too much of an issue to kind of drill into and into that info and scroll along but by the time you're in a you know like one of the shows we were we've, we've worked on together where we had what a hundred Q stacks of yeah. 200 cues each and it's to do with the it's the late night programming sessions yeah. it's the you know the early mornings yeah, isn't it's it? like when, when, you, when you're functioning on 18 hours a day of work you know try, trying to make sense of something you did two days ago in a late night programming session that you've got to then revisit it you know trying to remember all that information is virtually impossible so to be able to actually drill down into what the desk is doing entirely visually you know the labels here match the labels on my palettes um you know, I can very quickly match that information with that information, know where it's gone wrong, right, whatever, right. fix it, update it, and the client's happy. Okay, let's take a look at uh, freeform layouts, yeah. shall we? Okay, so again, you know, another, another really useful feature that I think will benefit a lot of people is being able to very quickly visualize what the rig's doing. I mean, even if you haven't got a full capture rig at home, being able to just see what the fixtures are doing when you're programming a quick yeah. color chase effect or something like that, and have kind of relatively real-time feedback is useful but beyond but for me the way this goes so much deeper in that i can drag all of these layouts in from capture 
I can then use these layouts to create my layout views for my pixel mapping, for, you know, I've, I've got a show that I'm programming at the moment, but I'm really quickly making brand new groups and group layouts and then really quickly applying pixel map effects to them. Yeah. Purely because I'm sitting there programming going, actually, I'd quite like to do this. And then you think, oh, I haven't got that group. Nine times, nine, previously, you'd go, I haven't really got time to build that group and do the layout. Whereas now I'm literally in a few button presses, I've got a brand new layout view put together. So you've got more freedom to be creative because yeah, it's, it's, the, it's, the admin is taken yeah, away. Yeah, all right? of that, all of that work that would you know involve you dragging a fixture around a, around the grid to put it in the right place, checking it out, making sure they all line up. It's just straight out of capture, straight into the console, and I'm back building effects and making a show look good rather than sitting doing console admin. So in this instance, we've got a view with all the spots. Um, that actually responds to the queue list as well. Uh, again, it's just mirroring what's going on on screen up on my capture screen here. Very, very quick response. But then, you know, making this and dragging that information in. So if we grab, so if we start by selecting all the spots, double tapping a new layout group. If we open that, it very quickly uh, populates the grid with a load of fixtures, but they're not necessarily where I want them in relation to where the rig is. Yeah. So we want to then pull that in from uh, our capture file. Uh, so it is arrange elements from capture, and then I've got my choice of where I take that information from. So if, um, in this case, uh, I think we're going to take the top view, and now I can actually I can even you know go as far as selecting fixtures in here, change colours. That me that mirrors out on the rig up there. I can see what's going on with it reasonably well. It gets, certainly gives me enough information to be able to work through what my rig is doing at a given time. Um, yeah. Certainly on a more theatrical production where I can't necessarily see the whole rig, to be able to very quickly work out you know, if I've got one random fixture that's white up in the rig and I can't quite work out what that is, just jumping into layout view, I can straight away see it's definitely that fixture there, grab it, change what I need to change over in my tracking view. I think also if, you, if you're programming for a designer, mm. it's useful. They like to be able to sort of look over your shoulder and say, oh, give me that, yeah. this color. And exactly that. It makes it a bit more visual for them as well. Definitely. But then, you know, beyond that, this then translates into the, into the groups as well. Yeah. Um, and then that's, you know, you're very quickly, as I said earlier, just building more and more detailed pixel effects or keyframes based on the actual rig layout with so very little admin. So the, so the group layouts are important because we've got those directions yeah. within the effect engines, the pixel mapper, things like that. So a lot of things are obviously based on these views. Exactly. And, and now you're not duplicating the work coming from a visualizer to the console, right? Exactly that, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, a, it's about minimizing all of that unnecessary, not unnecessary, but um, the, the time consuming non-creative bits of the job, you know. Yeah, the tedious stuff. Yeah, the tedious stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And very quickly building really good shows. Thank you, Smithy. It's all right. Anytime. Uh, do you want to talk about layout view? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to have to do an edit, are you? It's just oh, but it's bang on. Yeah. Perfect one shot. <laughs> one, one take, take Smithy, they call me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't record a playback there. Let's not do that. <laughs> so if we grab all the spots, double tap. Mm. I'm in a menu. Great. Let's try that again. Let's grab all the spots. <laughs> Let's not be a fat-fingered <laughs> grab. Let's grab all the spots. Oh, my God.